morning December 4 2018 today I want to talk about Plato's allegory of the cave the allegory of the cave from Plato I want to talk about that written 2500 years ago over that and um, in the allegory there's many things going on that we need to know about life and its illusions versus reality Plato <coughs> was a student of Socrates, as we know, Socrates went to the libraries in Alexandria, Egypt, before they burned and studied the scrolls and learned about monotheism or one God. Excuse me. And when he came back to Greece, he began talking about monotheism and one God. And in a Greek culture of 12 gods, 15 Greek gods and goddesses, Athena and Zeus could be very disturbed with you. And so were the Greek leaders. And this is one of the main reasons the charges of corrupting the youth was levied against Socrates, whereas he had drank the hemlock. And Plato was there for all of that, although he lived to be 83. Um, nonetheless, in the Republic, Book 7, the allegory of the cave occurs. And an allegory is like something that we would consider analogous to life itself, a parable if you will, but an allegory has a point that's even, I don't know, it seems stronger, more definite to me, the allegories I've read seem more strong a point than, than parables, or, although if it's faith-based, a parable could be very, very strong. Um, nonetheless, uh, the allegory tells us in a cave, there are people chained in this cave facing a wall over here chained and they've been chained there since life and they got chains around their neck so they can't turn their head either and facing this wall now you got to suspend disbelief a little bit here just like if you were watching Die Hard back in the day with Bruce Willis or whatever you got to suspend disbelief a little bit how do they live there well you got to figure it it's an allegory a bit of a parable with a point more and behind these people, the prisoners facing the wall, there all is a parapet and a walkway over it. And then behind that is a fire burning. So this fire burning, anyone who walks across the, the path on the parapet is going to cast shadows on the wall where the prisoners are facing. And these shadows is all they see in life. That's all they know in life. And they can talk and converse, but they can't see each other. They can't move their heads. They can't move. So down the walkway of the parapet comes puppeteers and they're carrying images of animals and humans and the sun and the moon and all the things you can imagine in life, fish and the northern white rhino and the koala and the polar bear. Polar bear smacks about 6 to 12 80 pound seals a day when it's hungry. One swat. It's amazing. Here's a seal, you know, polar bear swats down, the seal just half of it falls over and the other half sits there a minute and it's like, yeah, dinner. Amazing. Are they carrying that? Sure they were. They're carrying images of everything. I don't care if it's raindrops, they've got it. These puppeteers have life happening through shadows in front of the prisoner's eyes. These prisoners believe the shadows are real, that they are reality. Although they're illusion created by a fire burning with puppeteers showing us images of what is. The story goes that a prisoner gets out. You know, I always thought they escaped for a while. Some people say in the allegory they're just stood out. And the first comments from, you know, Plato are that they would be blinded by the light that uh, they would not be able to see because of the light and it would blind them so that they would have to adjust to the environment but when they could that they would see around them and they'd see what a real northern white rhino looks like of course the last male's extinct now and there's only two females left they'll be completely extinct soon over 20,000 northern white rhino existed in 1969 there are two females left that will be dead soon and they will be ended extincted in our lifetimes all because of a horn that people believe was an aphrodisiac or something else. Tiger's blood, if you will. It's a myth. Animals slaughtered and extincted from mythology. A lot like the shadows on the wall to cave. 
when the person gets outside, they start seeing real fish in the sun and the moon and the rain and all the other animals and all the other plant life and all of it. And they realize the shadows are not real. The shadows are illusions cast by other humans in life. Other humans cast the shadows at you in life and me. It's a funny thing when people cast shadows at me. I see it coming from so far away. I just kind of laugh in their face. You know, hopefully not out loud, but occasionally I've had that happen. I just have to laugh right out loud because it's so ridiculously ignorant and unaware of existence. I have no idea. Buy this. Do this. Look at me. I'm gorgeous in a bikini. Yeah, it happens more than you think. Reality is this. What does it mean? Well, once the person's outside of the cave, they, they have to come back in and live chained with everybody else who believes the shadows are real. Somebody says, wow, the person who just came back into the cave, I think he may be the first philosopher. And everybody else is like, why? Like, well, because of what he's seen with respect to reality and these shadows we've been watching over here on the wall because of this fire and these fruitcakes walking down through here with a bunch of puppets, puppeteers, trying to make you believe in the shadows. Puppeteers could be in government. Puppeteers could be in education. Puppeteers can be in medicine. There are puppeteers everywhere. There are a lot of puppeteers in priesthood for a while, it seems, doing other things than, than bringing the word of God or more than that. Um, a lot of people in every walk of life that are puppeteers. Now, there aren't many, but they're always a minority and they're very vocal. Sort of like Pat Robertson trying to sell you, uh, you know, Jim Baker is the one. I think it's through Pat Robertson trying to sell you buckets of rice and beans for the apocalypse. Then the other day somebody told me Jim Baker selling uh, CBD oil. You know, he went to prison for repeated rape on Jessica Hahn, man. And you're going to buy rice and beans from this guy off the 700 Club to survive the apocalypse? Are you kidding me? Get real. He's a shadow maker. He's a puppeteer for money. Reality comes in many colors, but the true reality is we're, we're, we're in a spiritual existence here. Our soul continuously wants to leave our body. Our soul is divine. It is immortal now. We will live for eternity outside of this shell. I hope, though, you know, when I die, I'm rejoined with this beautiful thing. That way I can have ribs and scallops and seafood. Yeah, sushi. What would heaven be like if I can't be rejoined with my physical self and eat sushi, I ask you? I think that's beyond the shadows. That's, that's thinking ahead, progress towards heaven. Reality. So the shadow makers are all around us. The shadow makers are in advertising and marketing. They're in every facet of our world. Go to the cloud. It'll be this. Yeah, the cloud will probably be like that because you won't have electricity here by then and we'll all be using wind and water power. And uh, we'll have to store it in the cloud because that'll be the only electronic device left. The one's up there. Ask a satellite engineer. Mm, yeah. Reality is the shadow makers are there. They'll always be there. They've been there for 2,500 years. There are sophists and charlatans in the group. There are people who will, as Aristotle warns us, even with speaking or writing, there's going to be people who use it and abuse it. Life itself, they're going to use it and abuse it above spirituality to make a buck. And they're going to make a buck off the backs of other people. This is wrong-headed. 5% of the American people are millionaires, but 51% of American politicians are millionaires. And the Democrats are the wealthiest ones. Look it up. The reality becomes the shadow makers are all around us. It's time and time to cut the shadow makers, find out what people really know, and quit fooling around in government and all these other areas, talking like a bunch of 10-year-olds on a playground or something. It's embarrassing. Reality is this. Pay attention to the shadows. Reality is what you know it to be and what you see every day and what you do. Take care, y'all. Hope you have a good Tuesday. Peace.